There's a place in the woods called Aspen Ridge, and we're lucky enough to call this place our home. We're the Popple People. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're not new here, welcome back. We got a Woodland Mills HM122 sawmill about a year and a half ago. And one of the things that we frequently get asked is, what do we do with all the sawdust? So we wanted to do a quick video on how we handle sawdust here at Aspen Ridge. Just a few words of caution on using sawdust. Um, don't do this if you have sawdust from any treated wood sources. What I mean by that would be like if you're cutting green treated lumber, the chemicals they use for that process they're not safe, or wood that's been painted, sealed, or stained. Also, sawdust from plywood or OSB or similar wood products that are glued together. Um, also think treated stuff like railroad ties or old utility poles. We are pretty cognizant of that kind of stuff here, so we only use sawdust that is natural. There are a lot of different ways to utilize sawdust, so we'll do this in sort of a list format. First up, Plain sawdust can be used in like cat or bunny litter boxes. It doesn't control odor as well as the commercial kitty litter, but it is absorbent, renewable, biodegradable, and all natural. Similarly, you can use sawdust for something like hamster bedding. So if you have any small critters, you can use up some sawdust that way. It makes nice animal bedding for rabbits, chickens, hamsters. One important thing to note here, though, is that there are certain types of wood that aren't safe. For example, you can't use walnut. There's a toxin in that. Um, so be sure to always check with your vet, especially if you have pets with respiratory issues. I've read that certain maples and cedar, as well as black walnut, again, aren't safe for horses. Cedar and pine aren't safe for guinea pigs. So again, be sure to check with your vet before using any sawdust with your critters. Number two. We use quite a bit of sawdust as floor dry. There seems to be always something that can be soaked up with a little bit of sawdust. So we always have a box on hand in the shop for that purpose. It's quick, it's easy to sprinkle over, and then just sweep it up. And then in most states, it's permissible to throw oil soaked sawdust in like your regular trash, as long as the oil isn't liquid anymore. Um, but just to be on the safe side, check with your local rules and regulations if you're uncertain. We also like to use sawdust in the winter for traction on ice. Now, keep in mind that sawdust won't melt the snow or ice, but we do this as an alternative to using sidewalk salt, especially in areas where we don't want to use commercial de-icer. We've had traditional sidewalk salt kill flowers and vegetation and destroy concrete before, so we've just tried to switch to more natural, environmentally safe alternatives, like using sawdust and chicken grit. Similarly, super quick and easy to keep a coffee can of sawdust in your vehicle for traction, just in case you get stuck. Number four, sawdust and wax can be poured into an egg carton to make fire starters. Now, granted, this doesn't use up a lot of sawdust, but it's utilizing some and making something useful at the same time. I mean, who doesn't like a quick, easy way to get a campfire started? This is just wax that has dripped off of other candles. I bag up the pieces and use them for this. Works well. And then once you have a carton of these made, you just snip off one little section when you're ready to start a fire. Another little tip that someone shared with me was if you've got some expired instant hand sanitizer, perhaps left over from the pandemic, give a little squirt of that into each of these wells and that really helps these ignite nicely. We actually saw some of the big box stores around here giving away this instant hand sanitizer because they had so much of it on their shelves and it was expired or pretty darn close to expiring and they just wanted to clear out inventory that they had. And you know, expired or not, alcohol is alcohol. It'll burn. Number five. Another environmentally safer alternative is to use sawdust for weed prevention. For example, throwing down sawdust on the path to the woodshed helps to prevent erosion and keeps the weeds from growing two feet tall. Now here is one place where we would use black walnut sawdust because the toxins that weren't safe for animals in that black walnut, it will help to prevent plant growth. Number six, you can make some really easy pin cushions just by stuffing sawdust inside of little cloth bags. Number seven, sawdust makes a great mulch for strawberry plants. Since strawberries don't require a ton of watering, sawdust is a good substrate for moisture retention, especially if you have a raised bed. Also then, when you pick the berries, they're basically clean and can be eaten straight out of the garden. No washing because there's no dirt. Just blow off the sawdust and enjoy. 
Also, sawdust takes care of a lot of the weeds and it makes it harder for those little runners to take root as well. Number eight, potatoes can be grown in sawdust as well. Put about six inches of soil and then fill the rest of the barrel or other container with sawdust and that works pretty well. Just be sure that there's holes for drainage in the bottom of your container. There's other videos out there with details on this process so you can check those out if this is something you want to try. We've also seen folks who grow mushrooms in sawdust. We don't care for mushrooms so we don't do that but some of y'all might be interested in that as well. You can also use sawdust to fill in holes and other low spots in your yard or on your trails. We actually use quite a bit of our sawdust just doing trail maintenance, just to fix low spots or to smooth out areas where there's just a lot of roots kind of roughing up the trail. When you don't have a root cellar, sawdust can be used for vegetable storage, especially if you've got root crops like radishes, potatoes, onions or carrots, they could store for actually quite a long time in a cool corner of the basement just in a bin of sawdust. The big thing here is just make sure that when they're packed they're not touching each other. Number 11. If you have any fruit trees, you can also enhance your orchard mycelium with sawdust. So we put some under our apple trees as well as in our wild plums every year. We apply about 2-6 to six inches of ground cover under our trees. Just be sure that the sawdust comes from a healthy tree, not anything that was diseased, or otherwise you could end up spreading that disease to your fruit trees. Here again, you don't want to use sawdust from like black walnut trees because of those toxins that are excreted. Sawdust is good for your compost pile or your compost bin as well. If you alternate browns and greens, the sawdust would be your carbon source, the browns, that help to balance out the nitrogens from your greens. Things like grass clippings, leaves, food waste, and stuff like that. You want to layer in four inches of sawdust to one inch of greens to make a nice compost mixture, and you always want to stick to that four to one browns to greens ratio. Lucky number 13. We also have some sawdust that we keep in a bucket just for use in a sawdust toilet. All you need for this is a five gallon bucket and then you buy one of these little toilet seats that snaps on the top. We use a two bucket system for this. We have one that we use for the actual toilet and then we have the other container that just contains our sawdust sitting next to it. This is something that's just really helpful, especially if there's an emergency, like if the power goes out, just so you have an alternate toilet. We like to use cedar for this simply because it's aromatic and it really helps to keep the sawdust toilet odor free. All you need to do is sprinkle in some sawdust after you use the toilet. Number 14 mouse bags. I had some small fabric scraps left over so I sewed them up into some small pouches and then I just stuffed it with cedar sawdust and threw some of those in the camper and the asser and one in every footwell of every vehicle that we have. We haven't had any mouse issues or anything in the mouse traps since I put those cedar bags out. These were basically made the same way as item number six the pin cushions. I just didn't pack in the sawdust as tight for the mouse bags. Number 15. Got an icy deck or other wood surface? Bring on the sawdust. Now we typically use chicken grit, but we found that this was just too harsh for use on our decks and other wood surfaces. When you put down the chicken grit and then you walk on it, it ended up leaving just tons of these little divots all over our surface. So we've switched to using sawdust and problem solved. Just a few final things that I wanted to note here as we're wrapping up this video. Use caution if you're putting sawdust near any buildings or foundations. Sawdust can attract bugs like ants or termites depending on where you live. So beware and keep sawdust away from any buildings or foundations to keep those bugs from infesting your house. Also, if you're worried about nitrogen levels in your soil, you can always add some nitrogen when you're putting down your sawdust. The recommendation is one pound of nitrogen for every 50 pounds of sawdust, or you can always just compost the sawdust before using it in your garden. It is best to put sawdust down at the end of the growth season, like in the fall, so that it can have some time to break down over the winter. If you'd like to get a hold of us with questions or comments, please email us at thepopplepeople, all one word, at gmail.com or you can plip plop a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button. And if you'd like to follow our journey, please consider subscribing. That way you can be a popple people too. We'll see you soon.